Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. Joining me today is Jordan Matheson. Hey, y'all. Hey, Jordan. How's it going? Hey, welcome Robert. back to the show. Thanks. Good to be back. So last week at Connect, a lot of uh, excitement and announcements. Visual Studio 2017 RC was introduced yep. and is available for download. And of course, there are new tooling in there for Cordova. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna, you're going to show us some of that. But uh, apparently, there's also some goodness for Visual Studio 2015 users. Yeah. So we're gonna, you're going to catch us up to speed on what's new in the Cordova world today. Exactly. Catch up on the world Excellent. of TACO, the uh, tools yes. for Apache Cordova. Cool. So yeah, we've got uh, the, some uh, new templates for this very popular framework for Cordova developers called Ionic. So mm -hmm. we've been working on a new version of the templates for their RC release of Ionic 2. So those are something in progress right now, not yet fully released, but uh, we've got some ways that people can get early access to those and take a look at them, and I'll give a preview of those. Okay, fun. And then uh, Visual Studio 2017 RC being out has the, the latest update of our Cordova tooling in Visual Studio. So we can and go through. Will any of that tooling make it into 2015, or is it just a 2017 thing only? Just the 2017. Okay. So 2017 will move you forward with right. the, uh, the Cordova experience should be a pretty simple upgrade for people from 2015. You can very easily put 2017 next to 2015, actually. Right. Okay. So speaking of putting 2017 on, one of the, the things that uh, has gotten a lot of uh, write-up in the blogs and whatnot was talked about last week was this concept of the workloads. When you install, that you don't have to install Visual Studio and all of its awesome goodness yeah, which I personally do every time, but you don't have to, right? So the idea being that if you just want to do web, do you really have to install WinForms and WPF and vice versa? Right. So does Cordova, do Cordova developers get to take advantage of that yeah, in definitely. 2017? Yep, so it's not, yeah, because I've had that case before with VS that typically I'll go in and I'll install, set my options and, you know, go get dinner. Right. Come back, check later. Select so, all, yeah. go, and uh, I was actually doing this last week on a machine that had to be repaved. I brought it home to finish, but then the machine kept sleeping, and it doesn't, oh. <laughs> the install doesn't happen oh. while you're sleeping. So I'd have to go into the office every half an hour or so and wake it up. <laughs> and then right before I went to bed, I, I woke it up. Next morning, sure enough, it's not even done yet. So mm -hmm. it took like 10 hours uh, because the machine kept going yeah. to sleep. Yeah, that was con, yeah. I think I've heard from so many developers that being the case. And with, with Cordova, we had... Uh, the machine doesn't go to sleep. It usually takes way less than Right. That. Still can take still an order of hours. Still takes long time. Sure, sometimes. Right. When yep. you do the uh, Cordova tools, mm -hmm. you usually install also the Android SDK, which brings with it Java. Right. And so installing these things, before with our tools, you'll just choose the Cordova tooling. Those come along, and that's going to put down uh, several gigabytes of data. Right. Just right on your machine alone, adding to it. If you just want to even check out the tools, it can be a barrier to getting started. Right. So. so is that still the case in 2017? Uh, there are still options, but now they're not the default. So I could okay. actually show you the, the way the installer looks sure. real quick and do something I've been wanting to do, which is install Visual Studio while we have this there you go. session, Let's which is quick that. enough now. So, uh, so on the screen here is the 2017 RC, uh, we'll call it the low impact installer. So you have your choice of uh, workloads in here. Mm -hmm. So like you said, you could come in and specifically choose things for web development, Azure development. For us, we have one called mobile development with JavaScript. And if I select this item here, first, actually, I'll call out before I check it off. If you look at the default uh, of Visual Studio, it's like 748 megs right. getting for installed if you do nothing. Editor. Just right. the base VS, very lightweight setup now. And when you tack in our defaults for Cordova, we get you up to 2.5 gigs, which is still okay. better than, I think we were over 10 gigs by default right. before when you layer in previously the Android SDK, Google Android emulators, Windows 10 development. So mm -hmm. let me talk about this, but let me start the install while I'm talking about it. And uh, yeah, a focus of ours for the 2017 release was really to address some major issues our customers had. We were finding that, say, 26% of developers working with Cordova in Visual Studio were having errors on their first build. And normally mm. that came to your environment setup things about versions of, uh, if you're familiar with them, you got Node and NPM and Cordova all independently versioning in yep. here to do uh, JavaScript mobile development. And so one thing we've done in the installer is introduce a concept of tool sets that is a package of known uh, binaries and the versions of those to be installed with the tool. So now mm -hmm. we put down a known version of Node NPM and Cordova that all work well together that we've tested. Okay. And that also uh, um, helps, I keep forgetting about this one, but there's another nice benefit of offline installation. Before, you had to be connected 
right. to when you first use Cordova to get Cordova installed, and now that gets included as part of the installation of Visual Studio. And so that was kind of another common customer issue that we were addressing right. with that. Cool. So we can let this run for a moment, because even though it's still fast, we're still talking maybe 10 minutes or so, right. and I don't need to watch a progress bar the whole time. Um, that would be a very boring episode. Yeah. Yeah, it's as fun as installers are. So while this is going on for a moment, we could uh, jump over to the Visual Studio 2015 space, because there's actually a little bit as far as the uh, Ionic templates I teased earlier okay. that um, I can kind of preview there if that would be interesting. Yeah. Let me get my right machine name here. Okay. So Ionic, if you're not familiar with it, let me bring it up here real quick. This is a very popular fr framework for Cordova developers. We talk about it a good bit in our conference presentations. I was at a Dev Intersection a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. You were there. Uh, Microsoft Ignite conference. Ionic features heavily in our uh, presentations right now because it steps in to a spot that a lot of customers kind of get blocked with Cordova at first, which is when you use Cordova, it gives you the ability to just create a native mobile app right. using web technology and get it device capabilities. But it stops right there. It's just build. There's no UI layer, no model view controller patterns. There's nothing. They're just okay. blank canvas. Ionic introduces the actual prescriptive framework you could work with using Angular, and then they have a whole suite of UI components that you can layer in for your application. So if we look at their website here, if I were to scroll through, we can find, uh, let's just say something simple like the buttons. And you can see all these different choices for buttons that they have available hmm. in yeah. their framework. Now, you could just use the button tag in the browser and some CSS classes with Ionic, as you can see here. It's still just a button element. Right. But they also have very complicated items that you don't normally get on in the web browser, but fit the mobile paradigm like uh, tabs. Right. So for example, here, this is some uh, code here defining tabs for my UI. So this is the Ionic 2, which is the next version of Ionic. Okay. And this is one that we have put together some new templates for that um, probably by the time we would this video gets seen, they're not all the way out yet. Mm -hmm. We're still working on some issues with debugging with them. Okay. But if anybody goes out to, uh, I'll have a URL of aka.ms slash VS Taco Insiders, you can sign up to be in this kind of early access group. And I'm sharing out some updates to that crowd as I'm putting these templates together. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to be available at some point to give you a good jumping off point for working with Ionic. Right, cool. So for example, if we look real quick here, uh, if I did File New Project after installing these templates, we have TypeScript templates for Cordova that use the Ionic 2 RC side menu, tabs, and blank. And these are the standard templates Ionic already ships. Okay. And so it's a TypeScript developer experience built on top of Angular 2 that you could use from Visual Studio 2015. And we're also going to work on them for 2017. Right. They just have some dependencies on other uh, Visual Studio extensions that we got to make sure work great in the, the new stuff as well as VS 2015. So mm -hmm. kind of coming together. So one example of these, if I run this real quick, I'll show you in the, uh, the Ripple emulator in Visual Studio 2015 is a way that you can emulate your app in a browser instead of having to go to a mobile emulator or a device. Mm -hmm. um, I'm touching on it here real quick because it gets important. This is a space we made a lot of changes in 2017 RC. I was just about to ask so, you that. So <laughs> it's a nice little lead in there. If you look here, the way Ionic's working, just to kind of walk through it, as I do a build, it's running an NPM uh, task in, to handle the build, so compile your TypeScript code, your style sheets, down into JavaScript mm -hmm. and CSS that will then run in the application. This is all Ionic's work. We haven't done any... Microsoft specific version of Ionic or Cordova. It's all just their open source product running. And you said that it's based on Angular? Yeah. If we Is were to look Angular 2? Exactly. Is Ionic 2 based on Angular 2? Exactly. If we were okay. to look at, say, the main component of the application, this is an Angular 2. Oh no. My font sizes, my font colors are not very good on this machine. If we do a quick yeah. That's okay. We can work past that. Colors changed on me when I changed themes, but okay. this is a TypeScript file that defines right. a class, and it's working with Angular. So you okay. can't see it too well, but there's this component directive that's an Angular 2 thing that this is working Got with. It. Okay. And so the structure of the app, you do all of your work in this SRC folder. Those are all of your TypeScript files, the SAS, so SCSS files that compile down to CSS. Mm -hmm. You do all your work in there, and when the app gets built, 
it goes into, uh, if you may remember from previous Cordova demos, there's a dub 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 folder in Cordova right. that is the application. That's what runs on your device. Well, those files from Ionic get compiled down into the dub 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 folder, and then that's what goes to the device. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, what we see in the browser. Mm. So here's the Ripple environment running. And in here, I could do some very simple device simulation in Ripple, doing such things as changing the, uh, oh, the, the skin of the device I'm working with to play with form factors. I can work with an accelerometer if my app uses that. And in this main frame here, you can see a uh, replica of the Ionic application running there. So it's just a very simple side menu template okay. they have. Yep. So real quick, touching on that, let's go back and check on our install. See where we're at right now. Getting close. I'm almost there. OK. So the Ionic template's a kind of excited point together because those, like I said, kind of get a really common uh, pain point, we like to say for devs of where do I go from here when I got just this blank screen with Cordova. So mm -hmm. the UI components having things like the tabs, uh, they have a plugin model called Ionic Native that wraps Cordova plugins to give you nice TypeScript IntelliSense when you work with plugins versus uh, today if you just use a plugin for Cordova, it'll be set up for JavaScript but not TypeScript. Okay. So they've done some nice things to bring together, not just giving you UI components, but making it nice with TypeScript and kind of comfortable to work with. And then, to make it work well with Visual Studio, do we do that work? Does Ionic do that work? Yeah, so we do the work on the Visual Studio side to pull things together. We okay. tag teams, like I meet with the uh, Ionic developers regularly to talk about issues we run into. Uh, try and, you know, if we can't fix it on our end, we'll talk to them about a bug and kind of work it out if there's something that can be changed in their build steps to work nicer. Okay. Uh, but we really, we own the Visual Studio side of it or Visual Studio code side. Right. And they just kind of do what they do best and build out their framework, build out their command line tool that we build around. Okay. So you mentioned Visual Studio Code, which doesn't necessarily have the concept of project templates. So how do you take advantage of that type of stuff in Visual Studio Code? Yeah. The Ionic stuff. Yeah. The, on the code side of things, VS Code really gets optimized around the tasks you do many times throughout a day. Mm -hmm. So along those lines in VS Code, we don't do templates because that's just getting started. You use the CLI for that but you have command palette actions to do things like quickly right. bring up and do an Ionic build, uh, get some IntelliSense for Ionic. Ionic 1 right now, we're still working on Ionic okay. 2 support. But it layers in the little helpers like IntelliSense, the uh, uh, TypeScript tooling in general, and then those commands for quick, um, kind of quickly kicking off builds. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's another one that we're actually going to talk about here in VS 2017, which is uh, it's a feature introduced in VS Code, which is the Cordova Simulate, it's called. So it's an in-browser simulator for Cordova apps, similar to Ripple, uh -huh. but it's sort of the, a V next of that. Oh, okay. And we brought that in. I'm going to go ahead and click. So launch. you just installed Visual Studio Enterprise 2017 RC. Mm-hmm. That's installed. It's down. That's awesome. So if I click launch, and you're we'll going to go be straight able to into do Cordova, Cordova app. Yeah. That's incredible. So I'll actually come back around on Cordova Simulate, and we're going to go straight to that. So this is when you want a live studio audience because they would erupt into yeah, cheers. Be, yeah, cheers. And <laughs> so what I'm going to do is we've built VS to first kind of guide you into uh, successful, like just getting up and running with Cordova mm -hmm. model of development. So I launch VS. I can go create a Cordova app, and I can actually go straight into the browser to do say 80 to 90 percent of my development without having to go to a device or an emulator. Okay. In this case, I'm going to skip some login stuff we don't need to do for this demo. Along with the installation, uh, since you'll notice we didn't put down Java or the Android SDK, mm -hmm. uh, you might wonder how we handle Android development without those. Well, VS has something what we call in-product acquisition. So if you would later want to go in and add in Android, we actually prompt you in the product to install the Android tools when you need them. Okay. It pops you back out to the installer. You can choose those options and add them into VS and then go forward. Got it. So it's sort of an additive thing as you go along instead of forcing you to have it all right away. Right. Great. So now, now we're in. We've done installation of Visual Studio, got to the point where I can start a new project all within 10 or 15 Ooh, minutes. search project templates. Yeah, so here's cool. the start screen in VS. <laughs> I'm going to search for my Cordova templates and we'll pick a JavaScript one and just create a new app using our blank template. So 
So, so far, there's a pretty good bit of savings on the speed of getting up and running here. Yeah, there's less to, less to load, less to set up when you start, less to load. We've also made startup faster by not necessarily loading absolutely everything you could ever possibly need the first time you launch Visual Studio, right? So startup's faster because of that, but startup's also faster because you only installed a small set of things. Right, yeah. Yeah. So less stuff on there, less things yep. to load into memory. So here I've got my app created. Let's just use the simulate and browser option. And this, like Ripple, is the same thing in browser simulator, mm -hmm. but it's got some improvements to it. Um, otherwise, why would we create it, right? Sure. <laughs> uh, one of those is a much more improved plugin simulation model. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is in Ripple, you can simulate some custom plugins like geolocation, the accelerometer. If you're working with those in the device, you can simulate them in Ripple. But if you wanted to go to a contact list or the camera, other, some other plugins, they didn't have any way to simulate them. Mm. So we've got a support by default for some of those plugins I just mentioned, as well as a, a list of others that we can put widgets in the UI, let you simulate actions with those and, and uh, work on your app in the browser without having to get off to the device okay. like you did before. Yep. But it also has a plugin model where you could actually, as a plugin author, create your own custom UIs for Cordova Simulate for your plugin. And, and expand it out to others that we don't already support by default. So here we have our app just launched in Chrome. And you'll see right away there's, there's no extra like bars around the mm -hmm. sides. If I, I'll try and do a two-screen thing here. If I move this over and you look in Visual Studio, all these controls are now in this Cordova simulate pane. So let's get our console out of the way and debugging settings. And now you have some of the same stuff you had before. You could simulate your geolocation, some device details such as the form factor. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I could play around with some events on the device and see what happens if you put the hardware soft but uh, search button and you okay. clicked it. But let's add one plugin in here that might also be interesting for people who haven't used Cordova yet. You can kind of see this key piece of Cordova. Um, we'll add the ability to use the camera here. So if you recall, Cordova uses plugins to get at native device features. So these are simply JavaScript APIs where somebody has done the work for you building the native platform version of the backend code. They've, mm -hmm. they've built the code needed with uh, Java on Android, Swift on iOS, C Sharp on Windows. So you can just use one JavaScript yep. API to get at the features, but not have to worry about all the native stuff. So I'm going to add the camera plugin to our app. And then we can, while it does that, I can actually start coding against it. And so then once it's installed, we'll just run the app and see what happens. So in this blank template, I'm just going to come in and we're going to simply add very fancy UI for uh, taking a picture. Okay, let's just throw some buttons on the screen. We don't need these details anymore. So this is an HTML button, not an Ionic button at the moment, right? Right, yep. Now, it may be a little confusing jumping around back and forth. This is the default the blank default, template right. okay. in 2017. So no Ionic, Got it's it. just straight yep. HTML, JavaScript, CSS. And the Ionic templates you showed before will, of course, work with 2017. Are they ready, at the, are they ready right now or in preview for both 2015 and 17? So through that uh, Ionic Insiders group, you, I've, I've got a version of them out, but since okay. it doesn't have debugging yet, I didn't put out the blog post release style okay. thing yet, so I can, I'm happy to share early access. All right, so the 2015 so. ones are readier than the 2017 ones at this point. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to do developer style UI here, right? So we got to have a button on our page to take the picture and a spot to put the picture. Okay. Yeah, while that's going, let's check in on the plugin that's installed so I can exit out of here. And back in the JavaScript for our page, I'm just going to simply add in some uh, code to handle that picture taking. Now, as I go at this, I want to call out another new thing in 2017 is the JavaScript editor has been revamped. It's using the same, uh, what we call the Salsa editor that's in Visual Studio Code. So it's a TypeScript-powered okay. JavaScript editor. So you'll see some differences in here like uh, mm -hmm. coloring in your IntelliSense, uh, colorization, a little bit of types called out. That's stuff we're getting the benefit of from TypeScript for just mm -hmm. pure JavaScript development. So we've got our button, take picture. And I'm going to 
get so used to using other frameworks that take care of some of this for me that I've got to <laughs> remember my uh, straight JavaScript. So we're going to add a click handler. And what we're going to do with this, let me help out with the, that a little bit, is we're going to use the plugin when I click that button to take a picture from the camera. And so through Cordova, that API is navigator.camera. And you'll see we've got IntelliSense. Uh, we had this in 2015 also, but we brought it forward. IntelliSense for these common plugins. So I can see get picture. And I'm going to look to remind myself of the API again here. So we're going to call a function on success. I'm going to have a generic error handler here that's going to do nothing. And then I'm passing in some options to this API. And as I type this in, you'll see IntelliSense giving me the help for these options. Mm -hmm. So this tells me for this camera API, I can say something. Uh, in this case, I thought it was destination something. Now I can see it's destination type. And for the destination type, come in and say that I'm going to target what's called a data URL. So with the camera API, this gives me a URL I can just load into an image element instead of needing to handle the uh, file myself and put it somewhere. Okay. Just gives me a, actually not even having to worry about a file, this gives you a base64 string that you can just show right in the UI. So no file was written to disk. I like using that for demos because it's just kind of simple. And with that, let's add a function that handles our success. And so this gives us the URL for our image. And then we'll go back and we'll put that picture into the element on the screen. This is a very fun uh, JavaScript HTML-y trick that lets you add in base64 strings for your image source. Okay. Long story short, you put that prefix in, give it a base64 string, and you get a picture on the screen. Okay. So that looks good. Now we'll run our app again in the uh, browser simulator. If you did this in 2015 and you went to Ripple right now, you'd get a big screen or a big message on the screen. It's just a giant text box that would say something like, I can have cheeseburger or something went wrong. Right, right. And, um, oh man, I remember you running all sorts of issues like that with Ripple before. So maybe you'll really <laughs> like this tool. Um, now, for example, with this plugin, you don't get that anymore. You Ooh. actually will have a place you can go in to simulate the camera. So you can see here in our simulation controls, I've got a camera widget. Right. And I can say to either when I take a picture from that plugin, prompt me to oh, give it so a file. It won't actually take the picture. Right, because the browser doesn't have mock that API. It with an existing file. Yeah. So this gives me a way to do some mocking. So I could come in and I can uh, just say always use this image, which will take my good old friend Clippy. And now in my application, okay. if I come back here, when I say take picture, it just there we go. simulates right. using the camera on the device. So you don't have any more. Well, now you can do something in the browser you couldn't do before. Right. Where you had to go to a device or plug in a real ugly JSON mm -hmm. string in the field. Yep. Uh, so like I said, there's support for more plugins than just this camera one. We also have, uh, well, I'm not going to remember all the names of them. So there, there are some others like the, uh, the battery status is one. The mm -hmm. contacts list is kind of cool for, um, I have a number of customers working on say the financial services space and maybe your financial advisor working with you know your list of customers and you keep them in your you know contacts on yep. your device you can as the developer of that app simulate those things and then there's an extensibility model to that uh, again a plugin author could take advantage of to build mm -hmm. more of these out it's what we use to build these okay and uh, so the code for that is all open source and you'll actually see a blog post from us going in depth on Cordova simulate and some of the details like that extensibility model um, Sometime in December or so is I think okay. what we're looking at right now. Just a little cool. kind of deep dive into this one. But yeah, those are just a few of the uh, kind of big new goodies for Cordova going on right now. All right, cool. So what can we be looking forward to in the upcoming months? Uh, Ionic 2 is going to be a big spot for me, like I was saying. So getting the templates to, uh, along with Ionic 2, moving past RC to their own RTM in our mm -hmm. Microsoft versioning, uh, their own RTM release will want to follow suit. First, we're going to try and just get those RC templates out. Right. Uh, along with that, working on, well, and I'm showing up a, a few conferences. There's at least one more this year in uh, Visual Studio Live in Las, uh, Orlando. Orlando. Yep. I'm going to talk a little bit on JavaScript out in the app stores and what's the state of JavaScript these days there. Uh, and mm -hmm. all, through all this, we're also just 
layering in Ionic and some demos. I'm going to be trying to put together a set of tutorials and material people can use for building out apps with, with Ionic and give a little more guidance than is maybe there today. So. There you go. Cool. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's something that, that I want to focus on, maybe on this show, maybe we do it over on MVA, but basically, you know, getting started with various frameworks or even getting started with JavaScript entirely, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I've, I've traditionally been more of a, a desktop client guy and I've played around with the mobile stuff and, you know, I've created a few MVC projects, but I'm not mm. really much of a web guy and I don't know that much JavaScript, to be honest with you. But, you know, how, so how would I get, how would I go learn how to build, you know, apps with JavaScript and Ionic and Angular and, and all this stuff? Yeah, the, <laughs> that's a good question. That is a good question. That's like, uh, I think I was telling you a little while ago too of some fun article around uh, getting started with JavaScript in 20, what year is it now? 2016 still, yeah. right? Uh, in 2016 and the number of technologies you'll hear out there and it can be a bit overwhelming. Right. Uh, I, I like the angle of starting from, so in this case, we want to build a mobile app and maybe hear mm -hmm. Ionic. Start right. with their tutorials and their documentation. If you look at Ionic 2, for example, it's going to start unraveling a few more things for you to start learning about. So you'll yeah, start but to start with Ionic 2, to there's some prerequisites there, and, right? I need to know some basic stuff like probably TypeScript and JavaScript and stuff like that. Right. right? Yeah. So yeah. So those will guide you through getting started on like Ionic itself and mm -hmm. Angular 2. They they don't assume too much right away on that very simple level, but you find so many things that you're like, how did this work? Where, where did that come from along right. the way that might help guide a little bit of exploration? Mm -hmm. But definitely a trend around uh, with Angular 2 and uh, Ionic 2 is uh, a trend there is TypeScript becoming something you're seeing in more places, especially right. what we're looking at with Cordova. And that is a whole thing itself to learn on top of JavaScript. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I think that would be an interesting one, an MBA course kind of covering some yeah, of those things. Yeah, that would be. We'll see if we can do something like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, hope you enjoyed this and uh, download Visual Studio 2017 RC. You saw how quickly it is to install. Play around with it. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thanks, everybody.